And it's time for Pet Perspectives. You know, Idaho has obviously so many places to explore. And of course, when we hit the outdoors, many of us love to bring along our dogs. But we do have to keep in mind that there's a lot of dangers out there, especially during the summertime. And when we're out exploring, things can get a little risky. So that's why we have Dr. Jenny Norman with us and Rocco, our Idaho Today mascot. Uh, they are from Ada Animal Hospital and they are both here to give some great advice. Uh, Rocco right now is modeling a, a life jacket. jacket. Exactly. So that's one of the things, you know, water safety, really, really important for all of our pets. And not all dogs are the best swimmers. I'm so glad you pointed that <laughs> out, right? Because I grew up with Labradors. Mm -hmm. They're water dogs. They're water dogs. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, I think that that's a culture where a lot of people are like, oh, it's a dog. It can swim. Not necessarily. Not the true. Case. They yes. don't all know how to swim intuitively, especially yes. your pugs, your Bostons, the more smush faced ones too, who can then get some more mm -hmm. issues getting water in their face. Want to make sure if we're taking them out, either practicing swimming somewhere so we know they can swim. But even too, I think life jackets can be a great thing for these guys. Mm -hmm. We have rivers with strong currents. Mm -hmm. They can get tired out if they fall in mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So just giving them that extra support like you would, like you would your child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's a good point though too. Like even, uh, you know, as, as a parent, I have two very incredibly strong swimmers. They're on competitive swim team. Mm -hmm. But if we're on a river, you better bet your bottom that they have it, on a life jacket, it, right? Exactly. It's, yeah. it's a different ball game or you're yes. out on the lakes or reservoirs. Yes. You've got boats and the wakes and things. There's just a lot of unknown factors. So why yeah. not? And I mean, your dog looks cute in it too. Uh, and totally it's totally adorable. <laughs> yeah. And even if you do have a water dog like a Labrador, life jacket, very smart, especially when you know that your dog is one that likes to get in the water and retrieve and make not you know it's a dog it's not going to stop and go that's a strong current nope it's it just will gonna go, not. that's a stick and, it's and gonna then go it's going to go down that current exactly exactly <laughs> yep yep okay one that i think uh is possibly something that might be a surprise to our viewers but i personally have seen myself and i know you've seen a ton uh, of problems come from this cheat grass. Cheat grass, yes. It's a sneaky bugger. It's one of the worst things that we have here in Idaho. Yes. And spring, especially summer and late summer, we see a lot of it. So cheat grass, grass ons, foxtail, some of the other names people might know it as, they're these awful migrating grass ons. Mm -hmm. They are everywhere. And what makes them so bad is your dog's walking, you're out hiking, it gets stuck in the fur. It's not just like a goat head you can just pull out and it stays there. These, they're called migrating foreign bodies. So it starts to work its way up your dog's paw. It gets into the skin and travels and causes awful infection. Mm -hmm. And it won't just pop out. Those, these are designed to penetrate into soil so that they can bury and procreate. So they're getting into our dogs and they are traveling up legs. They're getting in eyes. I've seen them in mouth, causing awful infection and pain for them. Oh, absolutely. I had a friend that had a golden retriever and we were hiking and dog was fine. Like, and we searched him for ticks. We didn't see any ticks. Everything was great. Good. About a week or two later, mm -hmm. start sneezing and spraying blood everywhere. And we're like, what is going on? Oh my goodness. Took it in the vet, had cheek grass up his nose. Yep. It had just, it may have been Made sniffing when we were out mm -hmm. hiking, sniffed it in, we had no idea. Buried its way deep up. It was horrible, poor puppy, but luckily, luckily they were able to, to extract it and Good. it was on antibiotics. But I mean, it's just like you said, those are meant to burrow into soil. So they're gonna treat your dog's skin like soil. It's a, not a pleasant it's, thought, but it's the truth. It's the truth. It's what yeah. it is. And they do. And they just, it's one of the most painful things. They mm. get awfully infected. And we see it all the time this time of year. Yeah. You know, and it's something that you want to get your dog into your vet pretty soon after you see that. If you don't see it and you see little swelling somewhere and they're licking, you need to get your dog in. Okay. I've seen these migrate all the way up legs. I've seen <gasps> them get into the spine of dogs. I've seen no. them get into the lungs of dogs. So worst case scenario, these can cause some really, really serious damage okay so getting them in right away so your vet can get it extracted before it migrates too so far. after a hike do your best to look and then yep. just keep an eye for you know another week or two are there any lumps like you said licking mm -hmm. swelling yep. go in don't sneezing if it got sneezing. in the nose exactly yep. okay everyone's ears, exactly ears. Okay. everyone's really good at checking for ticks 
check for cheat grass also. <laughs> great, that's a really great point. Add it to your list. Okay, heat stroke, it's been really hot lately. It's been extremely hot. Yeah. And that is something too, where it's talking about the Labrador that doesn't know there's a strong current is gonna keep going. Our dogs don't realize it's 100 plus degrees, you know, and that it's up there. So they're gonna keep going. They wanna be happy dogs. They're not used to this heat. They can't tolerate it. They go in with that same energy and, you know, crazy lab attitude that they have. And heat stroke can be a real thing for them. And it's not just, okay, we got overheated and now we're tired and, and need some time to cool down. Some dogs can be like that, but others, within a matter of time of what would be your normal walk, your normal time outside, this heat can cause them to have true heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Temperatures can spike upwards of 104 degrees or more. Mm. They can have some serious organ damage. They can get really, really sick from this. Okay. Uh, again, another emergency where if your dog's you know, overheating, panting, they're not calming down immediately, or if you notice, they're not wanting to stand up, they're looking pale, they're just really out of it from being outside. Another thing, put them in the car, turn on the AC, get to a vet right away okay. so we can start assessing everything. Uh, Dr. Norman, thank you so much for your advice. Very, very needed. Where can people find you? At adaanimal.com or our phone number. You can always give us a call if you're concerned about anything that you're seeing, 208. 362-5329. Thank you so much. And thank you, Rocco. He's you're a over great there. model. Okay, everyone, we'll be right back.